fan, but take some advice where advice is given from a guy who's also big, 300 pounds. Get on that because wrestling is not going to be the rest of your life. Yeah. But you would like a life after wrestling. After wrestling, so absolutely. Get on that. Then we had Steve Off take on the Merengue Warrior. Yeah. Okay. All the little girls like the Merengue Warrior. They were getting down, doing a cha cha. <laughs> they have fun. Uh, but it was the. Uh, uh, was the Merengue Warrior pulling off the win? He nailing Steve off with a running knee and then rolling him up. And uh, then after the match, tried to get Steve off to, uh, to do a little dance yes. to the main. And <laughs> Steve off had nothing to do with it. And uh, as soon as Merengue Warrior turned around, Steve off a- a- ambushed him and uh, he left the ring. So, so heels for life. Heels for life. Heels for life. <laughs> Then we had the international championship on the line is Invader number nine. <laughs> Sounds like a bad perfume. <laughs> Took on pretty Stevie Sterling, the New Jersey Jewel. It, it's funny, and I'm going to say this because I know they listen, so yeah. I'm going to say this. Sterling, we're a fan, absolutely. Of course. But when you're billed from Miami, Florida. Can you not come to the ring with a jacket that says Jersey Jewel? <laughs> Please. It, it, it makes sense. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Just Steve, change you're your You're going to get a call from Steve Just soon. change your billing. Change your billing. Yeah, I'll go back to being a Jersey. Why? Just because I have the Rosses from New Jersey? Who cares? And, you know, he's trying to fool everybody with the tan. Yeah. What's everybody to think it's real? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It does fit that he... Build from Miami, so uh-huh. yeah, sure. So after the rest of the team elite came out to distract the invader, Sterling hit him with the jewel kick, a form of the disaster kick, and picked up the victory via pinfall. Okay. So uh, once again, uh, the elite coming together as like a pack of dogs. So we went to intermission. We came back after intermission, and uh, the D2W Originals, Frankie Flo, Red Hot Russ, and the Jersey Devil cut a promo on Elite. Uh, Frankie Flo and Russ calling out Elite, uh, telling them that, you know, they're they're a bunch of young punks. They, you know, just respect is earned, not, you know, not given. And um, the Jersey Devil refused to join their team and form a clique. He's a total believer. He's old school. He's a total believer of that clicks destroy companies. Hmm. And he did not want that happening to this company. Uh, he brought up um, WCW when a bunch of guys who all went over there and formed a little click and slowly destroyed WCW. I blame Vince Russo, but... I, I, we can be here all day <laughs> Lis- listening. I blame Eric listening, Bischoff. And- Eric Bischoff. Um... Tony Schiavone, Tony Schiavone, yeah, um, David Arquette, the Yeti, uh, Shockmaster, Robocop, Robo. yeah, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> we, yeah, we can be here all day with a list of. We should have a, a tournament. You know, go back to our tournaments. Top reasons why top WCW d- d- destroyed itself. <laughs> top thirty-two reasons WCW destroyed itself. <laughs> the Yeti done. Will, the Yeti will take on David Arquette and. Uh, have we done, speaking of tournaments, we haven't done one in a while. Have we done a tournament with worse gimmicks? I don't think so. That boom! There you go. Red Rooster. Woo! The cobbledy Joker. <laughs> well, he didn't wrestle, thank God. But still, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> Poor Terry Taylor. Red Rooster. Red Rooster. Oh, he was such a talented athlete. Well, then he got the one of the worst gimmicks that wound up being one of the best for this character, and somehow he's in the WWE Hall of Fame. Coco, beware. Just moving on. Just, please, yes, move on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to talk about Coco, beware. Coco, beware. I just saw him. I think uh, ESS Promotions is bringing back the Birdman. Uh, Own heart made him relevant. Nobody made him relevant. He wasn't even relevant when he was relevant. Yeah, but somehow irrelevancy made him... Even when, like, WWF actually used to, you know, put 27 guys on a poster and actually used all 27 guys on a show, he'd still be the jobber. (laughs) Brooklyn Brawler all day. If you're going to talk about jobbers, the best jobber in the world. Brooklyn Brawler. Hey, what a 
Uh, Tag Team Championship was on the line as the former champ Steve and Tony of the Down Boys yeah. took on Team Elite's Brian Johnson and, and um, Steve Pusser, the one mean team. And, of course, they were joined by the 2015 Manager of the Year, Jasmine. And um, once again, you know, Team Elite playing the, Numbers. the interference role, cheating, you know, being dirty, but as the great, great Bobby the Brain Heenan said, it's not cheating unless you get caught. Yep. They did not get caught. Johnson hit Steve Gipke with the ring bell, covered him from the pin, and one mean team retained the tag team titles. Not surprising. Play the numbers game, and sooner or later, the down boys will get them. I don't know. They're outnumbered. I think the down boys are going to have to... Uh, they're going to have to find members. some allies. I don't know, yeah. man. They're going to have to find something, you know. Next match was a kendo stick match. So, uh, Adam Chandler the Great, accompanied by manager Jay Blaze, and he took on Matty Ice. And once again, Team Elite showed up again. <laughs> running distracted, running distraction, Adam nailed Ice with the kendo stick as he was jumping off the rope. Covered him for the pin. And then basically one of the confrontations of the night was Team Elite standing in the ring opposite Blaze and Chandler and basically didn't give them an option. They said they were looking to recruit young talent. Said Chandler was one of the youngest, you know, best up-and-coming talents in D2W. And they basically told him that they either join Elite or he'll be uh, extinct. So... Handshakes were made all around the ring. Hmm. Chandler and Blaze now part of Team Elite. Interesting. So now they're up to seven. Seven. Well, we're gonna see against NW- two of the DTW originals. We're gonna see some NWO type stuff come out. I mean, this is this is getting nuts. Then we went to the main event. The heavyweight championship was on the line. So the game changer, Aaron Bradley, take on the champ, Bright Lights. Jared Foster of Team Elite. And uh, what's the chance you think Team Elite would run down to the ring and cause interference again? 99.99999. It happens. <laughs> Team Elite stormed the ring when Bright Lights Jared Foster was down. Uh, Jared Foster was eventually disqualified, of course, retaining the title. The originals of. of. Uh, that. <laughs> the originals um, of uh, D2W. Why am I? Frankie Flo and Red Hot Russ. Jesus, for having a problem here. Yeah. Uh, rushed the ring to the rescue. Also, Junior Flo came down. And Junior Flo looked like he was siding with Team Elite, hmm. turning his back on his father. But then a super kick later, and Junior Flo joined the D2W originals. Hmm. So now it's. Seven to three. Still, big big <laughs> numbers in favor of uh, the elite. But the the show closed out with a huge D two W chant. The fans were electric. Uh, a packed house, standing room only, over County there people. in Newport, New Jersey. About hundred and fifty. Nice. It's not not a big venue, low ceiling type place, but they packed the house. Good. Very loud. Very responsive. Uh, for those counting at home, the bright lights, Jared Foster, shut up counter, stopped at 23. Nice. Good evening for Jared Foster. Promo and a match. And, and, I, I like yeah. that. And lots of suit appearances. And a lot of suit appearances. Yeah, so. There you have it. Um, 1 to 10, I give this show an 8. Okay. A lot of excitement in the building. Packed house. Uh, very responsive crowd. They did not have to be coached, kind of like a TNA. Mm-hmm. Which you had the pleasure of. I had the displeasure of, uh, <laughs> of, 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 of going to Bethlehem, PA, to see that first Monday or Tuesday. I don't even know. Show even on matter. Pop. Yeah, that show on Pop that wasn't even available on Comcast Cable. That's I don't even have it at my house The same either, night so. that it came out. But, you know, who's counting? Um... Yeah, opening match uh, was uh, a botch 10, 10 seconds into the match where um, Matt Hardy took on. Um, oh, what the hell? 
Lashley. Oh, okay. And Bobby Lashley Bobby missed Lash. missed a drop kick in the corner. Of course he did. Absolutely whiffed. He could have fit a Volkswagen between the space he caused. Uh, it was awful. Matt Hardy was a botching mess the whole night. And um, at the end of the night, the, the main event of the tournament wound up being EC3 taking on uh, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy botched the final spot. Climbed to the top rope, looking like he was going to give a twist of fate off the second rope. Fell, landed with his legs between his, the ropes between his legs. EC3 grabbed him. You can see him whisper in his ear, "Hold on, I got you." And um, then gave him a forward kind of suplex, and then uh, landing face first, and then pinning him to win the title for the second time, and which only to lose it later on the next week. Night. Yeah, which was garbage. So on a on a heel on a double turn. A double turn where Brodus Clay, a.k.a. Tyrus, who was with EC3, uh, did say, though, whoever won the tournament, he wanted a title shot. So I guess this was his way of telling him he was serious. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was a, a, a double turn because uh, Tyrus uh, turned heel and EC3 turned face, which uh, I like EC3 as a heel, though. I'm not I prefer him as a heel. He's that arrogant, like, he can be that arrogant, yeah. I know everything, I'm better looking than everybody. He is. <laughs> I, I I think he is better off as a heel, but we all know that TNA doesn't have the smartest booking in the world. It was so. terrible. We were there from uh, 7 o'clock till midnight. What? They did. Yeah. What? They did two other tapings. They did Explode and One Night Only. They did numerous tapings where I guess they, uh, I guess we're going to cut a lot of video between all the other nights and splice it together to make one one night only show and one explode show. And then they had the live Friday night show, pay per view. If anybody can see my face right now, yeah. I'm sitting here very confused. The, like, what? Yeah. What? I, I don't get this company. I don't get it at all. But there was a, a James Rude Boy Riley sighting. I the did we see went. the picture of that. Uh, we did take a picture and post it. And, um,. We spoke to him uh, a little bit after that. He had two tryouts with TNA. Oh. Uh, I don't know how they went, but of course we wish uh, him the, the all Warriors the a wrestling champion, Ruby Riley, all, all the best. All the best. Yeah. Uh, very talented young I, man. To be honest, I'd watch TNA from time to time if Ruby Riley was on. Uh, I was there for the James Storm return. Good. So Beer Money. Uh, Beer Money did reunite. I did, did reunite. See that. So, um, which means uh, James Storm. According to rumors, was uh, low ball, low ball from NXT, and uh, decided to say screw you. Supposedly, the offer was something below the six figure mark, whereas TNA offered him close to two, two hundred fifty thousand. It's amazing how a company with no money, with no money, can offer a billion dollar conglomerate more. Yeah. Than so well, whatever. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's I, it's ridiculous. Well. It's, uh, Let's just do it. TNA op- open up. I mean, I don't know. They're just open That's up just the way the books. cookie crumbles, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're uh, we're gonna take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're gonna play a um, what do we got? Two uh, KW Pro event promo. We got a they got an event coming up. We want to let you hear about that, and then we'll come back right after that from commercial. So we'll be right back after this. 2KW Pro returns to the Bronx on January 16th for the biggest show in company history. The Sultan take the six-man tag team action as they and a mystery partner take on the trio of Smiley, Mark Wen, and Isaiah Cassidy, the high spot party. 2KW Pro, your company, your wrestling. The following announcement following announcement has been paid for by the new world order hello this is the intrepid traveler paul london good journey y'all when you're ready to whip your rock out do it with coach kev at damage 365 radio Esposito's Pizza and Pasta. Check us out on one of our fine locations. 
930 Route 34 in Matawan, New Jersey or 233 East Main Street in Manasquan, New Jersey. From pizza and salads to pasta...